welcome to our fifth session of Going Deeper in our theme of community this week. As part of our theme, we're looking at the Book of Acts, and today we turn to the subject of sharing. Sharing is one of those actions that doesn't come naturally to us. As young children, we have to be taught to share. Our natural instinct is to take something for our own enjoyment or to meet our own needs first. Those who marry traditionally make the promise on their wedding day, all that I have, I share with you. And although it's not easy sometimes, as the bonds of love grow, the lines become blurred between what's mine and what's yours, and all we own becomes ours. We see in the book of Acts in chapters 2 and 4 a remarkable demonstration within the early church of how seemingly easily, generously and sacrificially they shared their possessions with one another, taking care of those in particular need in their midst. Chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And in chapter 4, verse 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. What struck me firstly about these verses is the contrast between the supernatural and dramatic manifestations of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the mention of signs and wonders performed earlier, followed by this very practical outworking of Christian and spirit-fueled generosity. So how did this happen so spontaneously for them? Why is there no sense that it was a challenge or needed thought or careful consideration of the cost? In both of these examples, there's a reference to unity, a like-mindedness amongst them, producing this sharing of possessions. They had everything in common. This is a picture of glorious harmony and oneness and desire for one another's good. Many of them, only a short time before, had shared the experience of the intense grief and pain of losing their Lord and Master. They had walked with him, talked with him, prayed with him, and now were not certain that they would ever see him again. They shared in the overwhelming joy at his resurrection and the realisation that everything he had taught them was true. Their shared experience in discipleship, I'm sure, brought about a sense of oneness. There was unity of heart and mind. They saw themselves as one body of believers with a common sense of purpose they were acting together in following the great commission given by Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations. Having received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, who reveals all truth to the heart, they now knew that they shared the same love of the Father, the same forgiveness through Jesus their Saviour, and the same indwelling Holy Spirit to guide and fuel their witness and service, and would one day share the same heavenly home. The believers were also aware of their own unworthiness. They had seen and heard of Jesus' example of self-denial and humility and his great compassion for those in need. They had experienced the lavish and gracious love of God upon them. Their expressions of generosity overflowed from this love that dwelt in them by the Holy Spirit. As they shared their possessions, there became a blurry line between what's mine and what's yours where God's love bound them together. We know as Christians that we're sometimes more aware of our differences than what unites us, but it's clear here that for the believers it was most certainly the other way round, and the outcome of that unity manifests itself in mutual care for one another's practical needs. How attractive this visible evidence of God's goodness clearly was to the unbelievers around them. We were challenged from the book of James recently to examine our attitude to our material possessions, not to hold on to them selfishly or store them up, and to give generously to others who are in need. We also learnt from Galatians how the fruits of the Spirit are not so much acts of the will, but a natural outcome of a Spirit-filled life and witness. In the same way, if the Spirit lives within us, then God's grace will be at work within us, our generosity flows out of our love for Christ and each other. As it says in 1 John 3, 17, If we have material possessions and see a brother or sister in need, but do not share, how can we claim that God's love is in us? The outcome of their generosity is stated in verses 33 and 34, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all 
that there were no needy persons among them. May God be so powerfully at work in us that we would be so united in truth and purpose by the Holy Spirit that our generosity would overflow to our brothers and sisters around us. Thank you.